What's the next phrase in the surah? Alhamdulillahi what? Rabbil alameen. Rabb. How many names did we say Allah has? At least 99. Allah chose one of them. His first description to us. Of all the descriptions He could have chosen. Khaliqi samawati wal ard. He could have chosen that. Al Aziz, Al Hakim. He could have chosen any of them. He chose one. Now that He's given you His name, which is Allah, here's the first thing you should know about Him, which is what? Rabbil Alameen. That's the first thing you need to know about Him. So we have to spend a little bit of time on this. The word Rabb is complicated. It has a lot of meanings. At the very base of it, they say in Arabic, Ar-Rabb huwa al-Malik, wal-Mun'im, wal-Murabbi, wal-Sayyid, wal-Qayyim. I'll make it in English for you, it's, it's gonna be easy. Rabb is someone who owns. Number one, the owner. It's the first meaning of Rabb, the owner. But if he's the owner, what does that make me? What does that make me? Property. Right? An owner has what? Property. It makes me property of Allah. That's the first meaning, al-Malik. The second is al-Murabbi. Murabbi means someone who ensures the growth. Someone who takes care of something so it can grow. That's called a murabbi. Now the thing of the word murabbi is, is it possible that you own something but you don't take care of it? Does that ever happen? Like you own a car but you don't do the oil change? Right? You own a computer but you never clean out the files or whatever? You download all kinds of you know, dumb things and it gets a virus and all of that. You own but you don't take care of it. It's very possible. Like you know, you have a backyard but you never garden in it. And it's all kinds of crazy things growing in the back. Or your kids have a room and they don't take care of it. Right? So you have ownership but you don't care. The word Rabb is someone who owns but also what? Cares. He takes care of it. He makes sure that it's take well uh, you know, cared for. That's Murabbi. Wal Mun'im. The third is, you own something, you take care of it, and you give it gifts. You give it gifts. Now, just because, for example, and obviously we don't have slavery like that anymore, but if, even if you have an employee, it's one thing to have an employee, it's another thing to take care of your employee, and it's another thing on top of that to give your employee what? Gifts, benefits, on top of what he deserves. On top of what she deserves, you're giving gifts. And if, you won't, if you're reluctant to do that with an employee, you would even be more reluctant to do that with a slave. Imagine someone back in the day, I mean, we don't have the concept of slavery like that anymore, but we have the concept, for example, of owning animals. Somebody owns a goat. You're not gonna buy your goat a nice bow tie or like, you know, you don't give it gifts. You just take care of it and that's enough. But the Rabb is someone who owns, who ensures the growth, who also gives gifts. What that means to you and me, I'll talk about in a second. Wal Qayyim, and the one who makes sure it stays together, it doesn't fall apart. Because if he stops taking care of it, it falls apart. How many of you are into gardening at all? Nobody? Okay, that's okay. It's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to hold it against you. Sometimes in gardening, you have very delicate plants. And if you don't take care of them for one day, they will fall apart. Some of you take care of like fish. You don't feed it for one day. Oh. It's okay, it's okay. He's poor kid. Can somebody find a parent please? He's like poor kid. Like so many people here. Okay. If your child has a blue t-shirt and they're hyperactive, that's where they are. <laughs> so I'm, I, I was saying as Sayyid, Al-Malik, Wal-Murabbi, Wal-Mun'im, Wal-Qayyim, the one who maintains the existence. If Allah stops taking care of us for one second, for half a second, everything falls apart. The blood circulating in my hands, the heart beating from one beat to another, is because Allah is letting it. Allah is making it even. He stops taking care of it for one second, and it's gone. It's all gone. This is Qayyim. So we're, what that word means is we're completely dependent on Allah, constantly. Then finally, the final meaning of uh, Rabb is As-Sayyid, which means someone who has full authority. Someone who has full authority. Is it possible that you own something, but you don't have full authority over it? You own a car, but you cannot drive it however you want. 
Is that possible? You own a property, but you cannot build however you want. You have to follow regulations. Is that possible? Yeah. But when someone owns something and they have full authority to do whatever they want, then they are called Rabb. Then they are called Rabb. Allah introduced Himself with the word Rabb. Rabb means someone who owns you, which means you own nothing. Rabb is someone who will make sure that you grow, He will care for you, so He doesn't just own you and not care. Rabb is someone who will give you gifts, which means I, I, first of all, I don't own anything, so anything I do own must be a gift. It's not something I earned. I didn't pay for my hand. How much are you willing to sell your hand for? A leg for? A nose for? An eye for? What are you willing to pay for? <laughs> SubhanAllah. Priceless gifts, huh? These are gifts given to us. Who's willing to sell their heart? Who's willing to, who's willing to do that? SubhanAllah. This is, these are priceless gifts. Then on top of that, wal munim, wal qayyim, and he's maintaining my existence. I only exist because he's letting me. One breath to the next is not because I eat well, I do exercise, I take care of myself, I, you know, I make sure I breathe in a healthy environment, etc, etc. That is not why I'm alive. I'm alive because He's letting me stay alive. There are plenty of ways people can stop existing. I've, I, I knew of people that were younger than me. Younger than me, just... And perfectly healthy, exercise, everything. And out of nowhere, the guy's cooking breakfast for his children, falls and dies of a heart attack in the kitchen. 29 years old, with no history of heart attacks, with no, not, no priors in the family, nothing. That depends on Allah. We're, we're not independent of that, from moment to moment to moment. And finally, a recognition that I actually have no authority. Entirely, the authority is in Allah's hands. All of that comes from the word Rabb. It, it all comes from the word Rabb. Now about this word Rabb. You know, when I say teacher, who does a teacher have a relationship with? Students. When I say parent, who does he have a relationship with? Children. When I say boss, employer, who does an employer have a relationship with? Employees. There are some titles that necessarily have a relationship. When you say intelligent, it doesn't necessarily have a relationship with anyone. When you say tall, that doesn't mean you have a relationship with anyone. But when you say employer, it means you have a relationship with who? Employee. Now there are some names of Allah that don't give you a relationship. Allah is knowledgeable. The word knowledgeable does not give you a relationship. It's a description of Allah, independent of anybody else. But when Allah calls Himself Master, Rabb, with all of these meanings, is it necessarily creating a relationship? Yes? Allah introduced Himself with the first description the first description of Allah is something that builds a relationship. Now we have lots of relationships with Allah. Allah is the creator, we are the creation. Yes? Allah is the giver, we are the recipients. Yes? Allah is the teacher, we are the students. Yes? These are all relationships we have with Allah. But Allah says put all of those relationships as second. The first relationship you need to know about that is the one that you will never let go of. That is the one that will always be there every moment of your day. Is which one? That He is Rabb, and you are, and I am what? What does that make us in Arabic? You know the term? Abd, slave. It makes us a slave. Now I've explained the word Rabb. We need to understand the word Abd. Because that's, that's what completes the relationship, doesn't it? I won't tell you a lot about the word Abd. I'll just tell you one thing. Because Allah introduced His part of the relationship, which is that He is Rabb. The only thing left now is what about our end? So when you go further down in the Fatiha, what are you going to find? Iyaka na'budu. We are Abd. We become your Abd. We're ready. We accept you as Rabb. By the way, my teacher used to say, Dr. Abdul Samir used to say, he used to ask me one time, we were just sitting, like studying Arabic with him. He's like, hey, give me a summary of the entire Quran. I was like, uh, I, I'm not sure what you mean. He goes, give me one sentence that is a summary of the entire Quran. And I was like, okay, 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 I got this. Accept Allah as Rabb and accept yourself as 
Abd. That's it. He goes, yep, you got it. I've taught you something. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's all it is. Accept Allah as Rabb, accept yourself as Abd. Now what is a slave? A slave is someone who doesn't have a choice. The bottom line, a slave is someone who does not make his own decisions or her own decisions. The decision is made for them. Let me be silly with you. We don't have slavery, but let's just pretend. Imagine one of you comes over and you say, Hey, no man, you're my slave. And I say, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so now you're the master and I'm the slave. And we're just sitting, I'm just sitting there like awkward silence for 10 minutes. So you, you want to go get some coffee or something? What do you... A slave does not have free will. So the only thing he can do is what the master wants. But he cannot do what the master wants until the master tells him. If, if the guy just said, you know, I'm my slave. I was like, okay, fine. And he doesn't tell me anything. If he doesn't tell me anything, the only thing left for me to do is whatever I want. Until he tells me to do something. You understand? What's the difference between a slave and an employee? An employee is only working for a set number of hours. Then they're free. But a slave is a slave when? 20, when you're sleeping, you're a slave. When you're awake, you're a slave. When you, on the weekends, you're a slave. On the weekdays, you're a slave. In the morning, you're a slave. At the night, you're a slave. At the masjid, you're a slave. Outside the masjid, you're a slave. You're not, it's not a time when you're not a slave, you understand? And the second is, you can only be a slave when you know what the master what? Wants. If you don't know what he wants, well, then you are going to do what you want. And if you do what you want, by definition, you are free. Yes? So, what I'm trying to get at then is, there is no such thing as slavery until the master gives instructions. Is that clear to everyone? There is no such thing as slavery until what happens? The master gives instructions. Now Allah called himself master, which makes me slave. And makes me think, well, well if he's master, what do I need? I need instructions. Is the Fatiha, anywhere in the Fatiha, did I recognize that I'm a slave and then I asked for instructions? Did that happen? What do we say in the Fatiha? That's asking for instructions. إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us. Okay, tell me what to do now. I've accepted slavery of yours, now you need to tell me what to do. What path I sh should I walk? Guide me to the straight path. There's a logical connection between master and guidance, you understand? That's why all over the Qur'an, it's so beautiful. You will notice in dozens of places, Allah mentions Rabb and guidance. Rabb and guidance. سَبِّحِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى If you know the surah, say it with me. سَبِّحِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى الَّذِي خَلَقَ فَسَوَّى وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ فَهَدَى the first I was Rabb, then you find Hada. Asa an yahdiyani Rabbi li akraba min hada rashada. Kalla inna ma'ya Rabbi sayahdini. Rabb and guidance, Rabb and guidance, Rabb and guidance, because they're connected with each other. So the first part Allah describes Himself, and the later, later part when we get to it, the really juicy part, we're gonna see that Allah Azza wa Jal. He's only a Rabb when we accept His guidance. Otherwise, we, you can accept Him as a creator. You can accept Him as a maker. But you still haven't accepted Him as a master until you accept His guidance. That's the, that's the logical connection here in the Fatiha. A lot of people overlook that, you know. A lot of people don't see that. A lot of people think, oh, Allah made me, Allah created me. Fine, but that's not the first thing He asked of you to recognize. He asked you to recognize that He is your master. That he's your master. So that's about Rabb. Then about the word Al-Alameen. Something just very brief about the word Al-Alameen. How is that translated, Rabb Al-Alameen? Anybody know? Call it out. Lord of the worlds. The problem with the word worlds is not a good translation of the word Al-Alameen. If you want to say worlds, the Arabic word for that is Al-Awalim. Al-Awalim. But the word here is Al-Alameen. I'm not going to get technical with you guys. Because if I get technical with you guys, there will be accidents in the parking lot. So I'm just going to keep it simple. Alameen means worlds of people. Worlds of people. What Allah is saying is different generations and different nations. That's Alameen. That's why Allah says, Anni faddaltukum to Bani Israel. Anni faddaltukum ala al Alameen. I gave you preference over all the other nations. Every nation is called a world. 
It's really beautiful. Every generation is also called a different world. If you ever talk to a senior who's like 70, 80 years old, tell me what life was like when you were young. And he'll start by saying, oh, it was a different world. Have you hear that? It was another world back then. We landed here, we came to Malaysia, we came to Singapore, we look around, we're like, this is another world. A world we didn't know. A world we're not familiar with. We don't just think of it as another country, we think of it as another world. As a matter of fact, in the United States, I lived in New York most of the time, and in New York, you don't say hi to people. By the way, if you ever go to New York, don't say hi to people. Okay, it's not a good idea. You know, you say, so if somebody comes, comes up to you and says, hey, how's it going? You better take out the pepper spray or like run. You don't say hello. But I went to visit my sister in Atlanta, Georgia. And everywhere you go, hey, how's it going? Nice morning. <laughs> like, you know? And that's just how they are. It's a different world. You know, I would go off to California and the streets are actually clean. I'm not used to that. I'm from New York. You know, and there are, there are palm trees and there are people that are smiling. It's all wrong. Everything's wrong about that place. You know? So I said, this is, I called the wife and said, this is another world. I don't understand this. So the idea of worlds is there are distinct cultures. There are distinct civilizations. And Allah says, I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter which civilization. doesn't matter which culture. I am the master of all of them. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In this ayah also, Allah says that it is Allah who created different cultures. It is Allah who created different civilizations. It is Allah who created different languages. And He's the master of all of them. So you don't have to be like anybody else. You could be like yourself, it's fine. Islam doesn't want us to look like Arabs or to be Arab. It doesn't want that. It respects every culture because Allah says He's not just a Rabb of one Alam, He's the Rabb of Al Alameen. Allah gave us guidance. So long as you can live by your guidance, you can be happy in whatever culture you're in, whatever society you're in, whatever language you have. They're all honored by Allah. It's beautiful. Rabbil Alameen. The other thing Rabbil Alameen does, all of us are slaves, which means all of us are equal status, which means no nation is better than another nation. If the people knew that, man, we would have a different kind of international politics. If, if the world knew Rabbil Alameen, that all nations deserve respect, all people deserve respect. Because all of the only one that put all of them in place is the Rabb who takes care of all of them and gives all of them gifts and guides all of them and is the authority over all of them. So why do they have to fight for over authority over each other? That's all, it's so beautiful. Just Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, just that.